What's up YouTube? Welcome back to CLEO's Network. Today we're taking a look at the 10 best decks in standard format for the Pokemon trading card game in April and May 2021. Most importantly, this is the format that the Players Cup 4 Pokemon TCG online qualifiers will be played in. So if you are trying to qualify for your region for the PC4 on PTCGO, be sure to pay attention to this video because we're going to be talking about the top 10 decks in standard. Of course, shout out to my wonderful sponsor, PoTownStore.com. Be sure to use code CELIO for 5% off for PTCGO codes over there. It is the best place to get your codes. It is quick, safe, and easy to buy codes over at PoTownStore.com. Of course, a special shout out to DinoData.app who organizes all of the data from Limitless and play.limitlesstcg.com. So the types of information I use to create this top 10 deck list for standard is quantitative information, which is the results from online tournaments held on play.limitlesstcg.com, and that data is then organized at Dino Data, and also my opinion based on experience and testing of playing in the format myself. Number one, we're going to be starting with Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, which was not number one on last month's top 10 decklist video, but it was creeping around in the top five. And I think lists have become more concrete. Better players have started playing Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX and becoming comfortable with it. And I think the meta has developed to a point where this can be either the best deck or one of the very best decks. The top three on this list are very close in my opinion. A Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, I feel like it deserves to be at the top because of the caliber of players who are playing it and therefore respecting it as a very good deck. And also, like I said, the lists have become more ironed out and they all kind of look like this list here from Stefan Ivanov that you see on the screen. Number two, but not far behind, is Pikaram. This list is coming at you from Bart Musser, and Pikaram is still one of the best decks. This card and the deck created around Pikaram tag team. Uh, this has been just a prominent force in the Pokemon TCG, both standard and expanded format, ever since Team Up came out with Pikaram in it. Uh, Pikaram, I don't think this deck will be falling off anytime soon. It will probably just stay relevant until rotation. Uh, but Pikaram is able to adapt to whatever the meta is throwing at it because it has a secondary attacker in Mute 2 and Mute Tag Team. It has Chaotic Swell to bump any pesky stadiums or even things like Giant Hearth that help your opponent a lot. And it has Crushing Hammer and in some lists, Yell Grunt to remove energy from decks like Eternatus VMAX that just need two energy to simply knock out a Pikaram or Mewtwo. Energy removal is very important in those matchups. And it still just focuses on letting your opponent take five prize cards and then playing Reset Stamp and Paralyzing with Raichu Raichu to close out games, as well as just being very consistent with Bolt Tons Electrify to set you up and playing a handful of supporters. Playing four copies across with the Marnie Bosses Orders research, typically you'll see three Bosses Orders, but this was a successful list and it's built for consistency, so this is the one I decided to share with you today. At number three, I have ADPZ, and like I said, please keep in mind, these top three decks are all very close in power level, in my opinion. Um, I just chose today to put Rapid Strike Urshifu on top because of the recent results and the caliber of play it's been seeing. ADPZ is another deck like Pikaram that has just been very strong since the combination of Zacian and ADP have been possible since Sword and Shield base set. And this deck uh, is so strong because it can pretty much beat almost anything that comes its way because it is just inherently powerful. It's not powerful because of the metagame. It's not powerful because of the other decks that are good. This is just a good deck that really doesn't care what your opponent is doing or playing because it uses alter creation to buff your attack and also buff the amount of prize cards you're taking. And then you just try to storm through whatever your opponent has in the active spot. Or if the active spot is has too much high HP, you just boss his orders around them a couple times and pick off a Dedenne and Crobat and the game is over. 
So this is a deck that is consistent, fast, and aggressive, and doesn't take too many auto losses. This is the current list I have. The Empoleon V helps against Victini V Max, and the Mute 2 helps against Rapt Strike Urshifu. I've always been a fan of playing for Zacian because it's consistent. Uh, four bosses orders is a no-brainer because bosses orders is what you're using every turn if the active cannot be knocked out and skyla is actually a very strong supporter because it can get rusted sword to buff your damage you can get great catcher to gust it can get escape rope to force something up it can get metal saucer it can get energy switch for that turn one alter creation adpz is just consistent fast strong could beat just about anything so definitely deserves to be up here in the top three Next is Mad Party, which has definitely rocketed up on my list recently. And Mad Party just has a ton of great matchups around for it. So unlike ADPZ, where ADPZ is just a very strong deck, Mad Party is taking advantage of the metagame right now. Uh, where Rapid Strike Urshifu is weak to Psychic. Picaram does not deal well with single prize decks like Mad Party. And ADPZ, its main threat because ADP kind of evens out the prize trade with alter creation adpz while being one of the best decks is not as popular as it once was so it gives mad party a little bit more room to breathe this list is from azul gg and two mu has recently become a thing happening in mad party because not only does it help against the cramorants around and things like blacephalon and even tag bolt versus picaram but it helps against uh, G Max Rapid Flow in the Rapid Strike Urshifu matchup, which actually can become close even though they're weak to Psychic because every Rapid Strike Urshifu deck plays Jirachi GX to remove Psychic Weakness. Mad Party is a very good deck because it trades favorably with most decks in the format. It can be a little difficult to play because of the sequencing and the resource management that you have to use to make sure you have enough attackers and energy and bosses orders and things of that nature to get through the game and actually win. So I don't suggest just picking this up and going. Probably practice for a week or so. Get like 25 to 50 games in with this deck and make sure you're comfortable with it. Next is Blacephalon or Tempozard, whichever one you prefer to call it. Uh, this is just my list I have up here. I don't think Blacephalon and Tempozard decks really vary too much. I have seen some recent Blacephalon decks that are much more focused on the Blacephalon and play extra energy because of that. But I think this firebox type kind of deck is just very versatile and it also rewards good sequencing and good decision making because you have three attackers that you can pretty much decide to use whenever you want cramorant to snipe things or to set up damage blacephalon to try to get one shots and rushy's art which is an attacker unlike cramorant and blacephalon will usually stick around for a turn or two because of its increased hp compared to the others this is a very strong and aggressive deck but one of the cons about it is that it can just brick it can have really awkward hands because of how many support pokemon you're playing and you're only playing two of each attacker so you might not always get the right one that you want at the correct time which is why i choose to play pokecoms over only cherish balls i play the two one split there because i do think pokecom is very useful in this deck where you're playing so many different pokemon but you need specifically blacephalon rushy's art or kramer at the correct times to fully reach the potential that tempos art blacephalon firebox dot deck really offers you next is eternatus this is a deck that i am personally not a fan of but i remove bias for these lists uh eternatus vmax is just a very simple straightforward deck and i think lee really hits that on the head here with this list you'll see just how concise it is it only takes up two lines for the deck list image playing four of most cards where you can four across the board for the supporters aside from phoebe and then four quick ball, four switch, four calm, four hammer, three great ball, nine energy. I think it's smart to just forego the weakness guard energy because it hurts you more than it helps. It doesn't even guarantee you're going to win versus rapid strike Urshifu. And then in every other matchup, it just really, really stinks to see weakness guard energy, especially in the early turns where you want to power excel an extra basic energy down and you draw into a weak guard energy that is not very good. The Sableye allows you to get back Phoebe for extra uses, which is nice. It's also a possible attacker versus Luke Metal's Ashen.
Next, we've got Victini VMAX. There are plenty of ways to build this deck. There is definitely not one deck list for Victini VMAX. It is such a versatile card since it does not need a ton of support to be used. Victini VMAX has a very efficient attack. And so it can be paired with Blacephalon, Scorch, Mew3. It can be paired with the Jirachi Scoop, up, Scoop Up Net engine, which I have tried also. Uh, but I think this is the most uh, versatile and probably the strongest build, in my opinion, for Victini VMAX, at least at this moment. The Mew2 and Mew gives you an extra attacker to use. And Victini VMAX's weakness is really when your opponent can attack with non-V Pokemon. So like against Mewtwo decks, against Pikaram decks, even against ADP if they're attacking with ADP, those are where you run into problems with Victini VMAX. So having Reshizard and Heatran and Megalop, Jump Pluff, um, or Jump Pluff, Mega, Megalopony and uh, Jigglypuff. Okay, really messed up on that name. Uh, and Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team can help you against the things where it's kind of awkward to attack with Victini VMAX and where Victini V isn't doing enough damage or living long enough to get the job done. So Victini VMAX is a very aggressive deck. Uh, I don't think it's as strong as it was in the early days of battle styles. Like I kind of told you all would happen because these aggressive simple decks are very, very good at the start. And then a little bit more intricate things come out as the meta progresses. So Victini VMAX still in the top 10, but not as good as it was. Next is Luke Metal, which is coming back, and Joshua Sutherland, who has been playing Luke Metal since the beginning of time, is still seeing success with it, and I think that's really nice to see a player just sticking to one deck and knowing how to play the deck and seeing success and showing that the deck can still be good. So Luke Metal Zacian has an obvious problem versus fire decks, but Santa Scorch is gone for the most part. It's still being played, but not in my top 10 this weekend. And Victini VMAX and Blacephalon have both dialed back a little bit in play in favor of some other things like Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX, which is a very good matchup for Luke Metal Zacian. So if you're brave enough to try to dodge fire decks and you like playing a slower game, Luke Metal Zacian is the deck for you. Next is Psychic Mewtwo, which is the Mewtwo deck of my top 10 this week. Mewtwo Welder was seeing play early on, and that has kind of faded out. Lightning Mewtwo is just overridden by Pikaram because Pikaram is more consistent. Agrowl Mewtwo has also fallen off a little bit, but it's still a deck floating around, so keep that in mind. But Psychic Mewtwo, I think, is the most uh, popular and best Mewtwo and Mew tag team variant at the moment. It focuses on uh, setting up with Star Search and then using Trevenant Dusknor plus Amarni to disrupt your opponent, but not as much as Psychic Mewtwo variants in the past have, or any of the Psychic Mewtwo variants you might see using the Rotom to Accelerate Energy will. This one is kind of just a classic Mewtwo deck, like you might even see with Mewtwo Welder, but this is not using Welder to Accelerate Energy, so no Fire Energy. And you have a plethora of attackers to choose from to copy with Mewtwo or use themselves. You can use uh, Giratina Garchomp and Reshizard, Trevenant Dusknor, Gengar Mimic you. you can attack with all those if need be, but Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team is your main attacker. It's running Stealthy Hood so that Mimic you in Rapid Strike Urshifu can't shut off your Mewtwo and Mew's perfection ability because that is integral to your deck performing well in most cases. And last is Orbital VMAX, which is a pet deck of mine, and I tried to remove bias from this last spot of the top 10 for today's top 10 best decks video, and I think I did. I, I objectively do think that Orbital VMAX is very good. As old GG saw success with this list, my list still varies a little bit off of this, but this is the more... Uh, kind of mainstreamed Orbital VMAX list, focusing on the Tag Call engine, not running any Marnies. I think the Grimsley might just be cute. Uh, the Grimsley might just be better off as a Mimikyu or better off as a Phoebe to have a little bit of a shot versus Luke Metal Zacian if you're expecting to run into that a lot. I'm still not positive if for special Grass Energy or cutting the uh, Weakness Guard Capture for two extra basic Grass is better. 
depending on how much energy removal you're expecting you might want to add in a couple basic grass but azul did pretty well in a chill tcg tournament with this list so this is the one i'm showing i haven't been able to find any success with my uh current list i haven't had time to play many tournaments unfortunately but that hopefully that'll change soon and i definitely wanted to show off orbital v max so i think azul's list was the best one to show for this video orbital v max takes advantage of things like mad party and even the whimsicott tool drop these decks with very low hp single prize attackers because eerie beam spreads around and can take knockouts like mid-turn, even multiple knockouts. Uh, but Cheryl has also breathed new life into Orbital VMAX because things like Pika Rom and Rapid Strike Urshifu and ADP Zashin, some of the top decks right now, aren't taking one shots on Orbital VMAX, so you can just use Cheryl to heal. Uh, which makes this another slow kind of thoughtful deck like Luke Metal Zacian is. So if Luke Metal Zacian isn't your cup of tea, but you don't want to play the aggressive decks like ADPZ and Pika Ramen Victini, maybe try out some Orbital VMAX. So these are the top 10 right now for April and May 2021. It will probably stay fairly similar to this up until chilling rain in june uh, but if there is need for an update i will make an update for mid to late may but especially going into the players cup four i think these like the top six or seven decks are the most popular and those are what you should be expecting to play against quite frequently whereas the bottom three luke metal psychic mew three and Orbeetle, beetle i think they're all very solid decks but i don't think they're very popular right now uh, so these are decks to try out for yourself and also test against and prepare to play against. Whether you're playing in online tournaments, playing on the PTCGO versus, or trying to qualify for the Players' Cup 4. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon TCG content. Leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video. Check out PoTownStore.com for all of your PTCGO needs. Save yourself some money, support the channel. In the meantime, I greatly appreciate the views and any sort of likes and comments and support you all give me. Uh, so thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.